the 15 percent of such <coughs> cardio studies are happening in uh, so-called young people there who, who are less than 40 years of age group uh, <coughs> so we all know that the traditional risk factors for cardiovascular diseases are like the diabetes hypertension obesity physical inactivity <coughs> smoking so these are the traditional risk factors but <coughs> let me tell you one shocking trend that this so-called weak confident cartilage still do not know the reasons for nearly about 30 to 40 percent of heart attacks so we could with that available traditional risk factors we can only explain nearly about 60 to 70 percent of heart attacks so still <coughs> a lot of research uh, needs to be done in uh, this area uh, now coming to one of the novel risk factor <coughs> that is a newer risk factor that is one of the inflammatory markers known as high sensitivity c-reactive protein uh, actually there's a lot of upcoming evidence in the last one decade uh, about this <coughs> parameter and uh, even now it is uh, <coughs> outperforming uh, the LDL cholesterol also in predicting the cardiovascular diseases so which, which is very much surprising and though initially there were some hiccups and some controversies regarding HSCRP now in the last uh, three to five years uh, most of the uh, cartilage fraternity in the world has accepted that it has uh, it, it's an independent risk factor and has to be used more extensively uh, to risk stratify patients and so <coughs> realizing this now the latest guidelines like the 2013 ACCHA as well as the 2011 uh, National Lipid Association panel has recommended to screen everybody with uh, HSCRP uh, when we are screening for other uh, risk factors of the cardiovascular disease. So now just <coughs> uh, to uh, remind you all about some of the slide uh, diagrams which you have studied in your pathology probably in, in your second MBBS that how the uh, atherosclerosis happens. We all know that actually atherosclerosis is basically a chronic inflammatory process. Uh, earlier it was just thought to be a passive process of wherein uh, the lipids just percolate into the intima media of the artery and deposit there but now it's very well accepted that it's not just a passive process but it's a very highly active inflammatory process and it's a, it's a chronic inflammatory process that's ongoing so usually <coughs> the LDL cholesterol uh, influx into the uh, endothelium like uh, into the tunica intima is the first step and then it undergoes oxidization and <coughs> glycation uh, to produce uh, what is known as oxidized LDL which is uh, highly uh, inflammatory uh, active uh, agent and that uh, produces some uh, chemicals known as uh, MCP1 that is monocyte chemo attracting protein 1 which then attracts the monocyte which is circulating in the blood uh, <coughs> and that uh, once the uh, monocyte gets inside uh, the clinical media engulfs the oxidized LDL and that becomes the foam cell and hence the, the, there is a progression of atherosclerotic plague initially with fatty streak and then there will be a lipid core and then there is migration of smooth muscle cells uh, from the tunica media and then there is necrosis of tunica media and there is a formation of lipid rich core and then one fine day uh, you know, the warlike endothelium ruptures or uh, erodes and then there is thrombus formation and this is the pathogenesis of uh, acute coronary syndrome. As we all know that, uh, I know, I think there are uh, more of, probably I think everybody is a non cartilage here, so let me explain in detail uh, regarding uh, just uh, a one minute explanation. Uh, that usually, you know, uh, the lipid is responsible for the stable plate, whereas once it ruptures, it, the echo cap ruptures, uh, then you know the thrombus forms there you know for, for the thrombus to form it takes hardly few minutes uh, two hours so that's why acute coronary syndrome uh, develops overnight whereas you know the stable the lipid plague uh, takes years or even decades uh, to increase and uh, so initially that uh, causes you know uh, something known as stable coronary artery disease and one fine day the cap ruptures and there is thrombus formation and uh, suddenly there is total occlusion of the artery causing acute coronary syndrome uh, so, <coughs> these are the so <coughs> various inflammatory mediators <coughs> which are responsible for all these processes of accumulation of uh, the uh, recruitment of leukocytes to cause uh, this stable plague. Uh, so, we are all, uh, there are 
some uh, uh, pathways which can be interpreted by many of the medicines to halt this process and prevent uh, the progression of coronary artery disease and uh, the acute coronary syndromes. So we, there are various options. So let me directly come to the uh, uh, molecule of interest <coughs> that we are discussing today. I think my previous colleague has explained some of the uh, uh, <coughs> mechanisms. This is actually, uh, there is one pathway called as nuclear factor kappa beta pathway, which is actually uh, a, a, a protein in the cytoplasm and that usually we would have binded with an inhibitory kappa beta protein uh, and once there is an inflammatory stimuli uh, that causes this inhibitory kappa beta to uncouple from the nuclear uh, nuclear factor kappa beta protein and then that goes and <coughs> and that becomes active and then that goes into the nucleus where it causes you know the tra transcription of various inflammatory mediators like the tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 6 interleukin 1 beta and uh, HSCRP. So these, the concentration of these things will then increase in blood and will <coughs> propagate the uh, action of uh, uh, atherosclerosis or inflammation. So if we can, uh, which if any drug can, uh, like the curcumin, what I was telling is actually basically, uh, this, is a, uh, this is responsible for the yellow color of the uh, the curry spice tar that is turmeric that we use so this has been traditionally used in both the indian and the chinese uh, medicines so <coughs> they have curcumin is basically a polyphen polyphenolic compound extract from the uh, turmeric so <coughs> cadilla is working on that uh, molecule to develop it as uh, a drug formulation basically that will inhibit this nuclear factor kappa beta to go and bind to the uh, nucleus and produce all these uh, inflammatory markers. So in a way curcumin when uh, it's ingested will prevent <coughs> those inflammatory mediators uh, concentration to rise in the bad blood and so in that way it really halts the, uh, the process of atherosclerosis. And so in various studies of course uh, most of them are of uh, small scale studies, none of them are randomized trials. So uh, the data is still very primitive and uh, preliminary. And, but definitely they have shown in that preliminary studies to have promising results of like uh, it has clearly shown to reduce the inflammatory marker that is high sensitivity C reactive protein. And then in one of the studies from Thailand constituting around 120 patients have shown that even there is around 30% reduction of myocardial infarction after CABG when they were supplemented with around 3 to 4 gram of curcumin per day. Uh, in that study they have used 3 days prior and 5 days after the CABG. Uh, similarly, even uh, there was a reduction of uh, cholesterol, like the, uh, around 40 to 50 percent reduction in cholesterol was seen with curcumin in uh, some of the laboratory endpoint uh, studies. And even it's also a boon for diabetic patient in that it reduces the fasting blood glucose, HbA1c, and the insulin resistance. And also the complications of diabetes, like the diabetic nephropathy. Uh, was uh, I mean the protein era was attenuated and the diabetic nephropathy uh, can be postponed <coughs> with curcumin. Uh, so <coughs> this so this is all about curcumin, and uh, though as I said uh, now because uh, among all the specialties in the medicine, probably the cardiology is the specialty which has got highest evidence base in the form of I mean we have for every molecule we have at least uh, 10 to 15 randomized control trials and another. 10, 20 meta analysis. So, if we com if we compare to that level of evidence, probably it is uh, still you know the just the beginning, and we have to go a long way. But uh, definitely, uh, it's promising in its uh, <coughs> uh, pilot studies. So, this is all about curcumin, and then there is uh, the Cadilla is also uh, developing one more uh, molecule called as uh, 3-hydroxy, which is highlighted in the red in the middle one, the 3-hydroxy anthelmic acid, that is 3-HAA. Again, this is also uh, one of the anti-inflammatory molecule and anti-atherosclerotic uh, <coughs> action is well, well prone with this molecule. And <coughs> this also basically, uh, an, it's an intermediate metabol of, metabolite of tryptophan, which is an amino acid found, but this is actually found in the uh, in our body, but at a very low concentration. So if this can be given, if from a supplemented externally through uh, a drug formulation in high dose, uh, it has definitely shown to reduce these similarly the inflammatory markers and also it has shown to reduce uh, the <coughs> uh, cholesterol levels and even again this also works at gene level and uh, it 
it enhances the expression of favorable genes and suppresses the uh, expression of unfavorable genes uh, with respect to the atherosclerosis. So even there are many studies, especially I mean these are of um, uh, animal studies, very preliminary data. Uh, but it has clearly shown that it reduces the cholesterol by nearly about 50 percent and the triglyceride by about 80 percent, 75 to 80 percent, which is uh, like there is around a uh, very significant decrease in triglycerides. And uh, similarly, <coughs> the CD4 count is also one of the in, uh, marker of inflammation. And again, in uh, animal studies, it has clearly shown that the CD4 T cells were reduced in the atherosclerotic lesions when they were treated with this 3HA uh, supplementation. Similarly, again, in uh, the mice studies, when they were supplemented the uh, high fat diet, the Western fat diet, and then uh, in the control group, they had given this 3HA supplementation, and in the other group, there was placebo. You can clearly see that. The atherosclerotic the, on the left side are the cross sections, the Sudan 4 uh, uh, staining uh, cross sections, histological sections. We can see that uh, in the 3HA uh, treated group, nearly the atherosclerotic lesions reduced by 80 percent. And uh, similarly, the others on the other side are the cryo sections of the arch of the aorta of the of those mice which are treated. Again, we can see that the atherosclerotic <coughs> uh, burden was very much reduced. In the uh, mice which were uh, in the mice which are treated with uh, 3HA, so <coughs> to summarize, 3HA is 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 a, is a intermediate metabolite of tryptophan pathway, and it has the <coughs> uh, following significant like it reduces the LDL and VLDL cholesterol and is known to increase the HDL, which is HDL cholesterol is supposed to be good cholesterol. The higher it is, the better it is. <coughs> And uh, as we all know that it reduces the inflammatory markers like CD4 uh, counts. So to conclude, <coughs> uh, still you know uh, with all the available uh, present medications, we have a residual risk of all the medicines. For example, uh, statins which now are you know, uh, probably the uh, highest sold cardiac medicines, uh, even they also reduce uh, the events by around 30 to 40 percent. Still we have a residual risk of 60 percent. Like. Even suppose like if 100 people are on statins and uh, <coughs> only around we can reduce the risk of heart attack by 30 uh, percent, like 30 percent might be we can prevent only 30 percent, 30 percent from having an heart attack. Still 60 to 70 percent will develop heart attack even on statins. So this is known as a residual risk. So people are working on those uh, and we are moving away from the traditional uh, uh, approaches of targeting the cholesterol and platelets to a newer modality like the suppressing the inflammation by using these anti-inflammatory drugs. Probably with uh, uh, further <coughs> studies, uh, I hope that uh, in the, this uh, 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 Cadilla succeeds in uh, developing and uh, patenting these uh, uh, molecules. And uh, uh, okay, thank you everybody. And once again, I would like to thank you. Cadilla.